to Invest Insights. I'm Abby Malone. I'm joined today by Mark Kasky, the founder and CEO of Steel Nation. Mark, thank you very much for being with me today. Thanks, Abby. Thanks for having me. So let's begin. 14 years ago, you saw the opportunity to help the energy industry with the construction of carefully designed buildings that were cool, quiet, and safe. How do you think your personal experience can inspire new generations to enter the construction industry and innovate with fresh ideas? That's a gr- uh, great question. I have to go back uh, almost 14 years ago. Um, I'd, I'd worked for other companies. I've been uh, pretty much fired from every company that I had worked with because uh, I do have my own views and um, being an extrovert and uh, my mouth tends to get me in trouble. So um, I, I knew there was a better way to do things, uh, faster, uh, more economical, those types of things. So every time I would go to uh, my immediate boss or uh, VIP bosses, um, I would state my mind pretty strongly and then I would be shown the uh, exit door to turn the keys to my truck. So, um, you know, I eventually got to a stage uh, 14 years ago when I started Steel Nation. Um, I've, I've been preaching my way or the highway for many years. Um, let's do it my way. Let's let's come up with something, um, you know, that, that that's more economical, that's uh, easier on our clients, one-to-one communication. Um, let, let's use the technologies that we have, uh, let's be efficient in the way we build things. Um, And it's it's still to this day, um, kind of what we're all about here at Steel Nation. We, uh, you know, we've we've got great people here, great paying jobs. Um, And the reason we're able to pay great is we watch our business very closely. We invest in other businesses. Um, You know, we have four different divisions now and, each of those are kind of relying on each other, but they're synergistic. And um, you know, it's just, uh, the, 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 you, you're quite, I could go on Abby for an hour or so, and I know we don't have that much time. So I, I, I hope that answered your question. Greece, as you stated in your interview with our annual business report in West Pittsburgh last year, the price of construction has risen substantially. What are some creative ways you are mitigating increased costs and reducing extended construction times on projects? Well, that's, um, you know, with the, with the COVID lockdowns uh, going on two or actually a little over two years, it was a shock to our system. Um, we, you know, we're in the steel, bu- steel building business and we can really, you know, over the last 20 years or so, think of a pound of steel um, would be about a dollar in economic in, in, in reality. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if, 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 you, if you wanted a, a building to, you know, in the next six weeks or so, we can give you a price. We can't do that right now. I just got a notification this morning at six o'clock that uh, one, one of our steel suppliers is up another 3.15%. And you don't yeah. think that's a lot to begin with, but compounded, you know, every other month for the last 24, 25 months that we're up, um, this additional three point three percent rise, I believe, we're at two hundred and thirty percent higher than we were at the start of COVID, which is which is shocking. And it's not just us; it's uh, you know we when we go to buy a truck or or cars or um, heavy machinery and things like that, everything else is up uh, two times what it was. So we've got to find creative ways to do it cheaper. Um, I shouldn't say cheaper, more economical. Um, then in construction, we can look at shipping patterns, uh, combining um, combining many, many different products on the one shipping truck, which is a huge thing right now. The surcharges are, um, our, our, our clients are getting shocked as they should from the surcharges just in fuel alone. Um, you know, diesel fuel is, um, mo- most of our fleet vehicles are, are diesel. Um, I just filled up over the weekend five dollars and forty five cents, where a year ago it was um, you know two sixty five two seventy. So it's almost in it doubled as well. Um, everything that we touch uh, in the construction industry is up pretty much double. Um, I, and I have uh, clients asking me, should I wait on on my project till next year? Mm-hmm. And in in all truthfulness, that's got to be an option for our clients. Do I, what do I think is going to happen happen in the next year? I don't know. Are these is inflation here to stay? Um, are those construction 
costs going to start coming down. We we did see a slight decline uh, at the end of last year in construction. Uh, wood, wood has come down quite a bit, and, and we use some wood for framing. Uh, steel was starting to come down, and then you know the the the, the fuel prices has just driven everything back to where it was. Uh, in the middle of COVID a year ago. So, um, you know, there, there's little things that we can do here and there to, to help out our clients and work more efficiently, uh, but it's hard. It, it's very hard. It's, it's our biggest challenge right now is to, is to come in and, um, you know, we, 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 may, we may be a two to three months in design of the buildings and then another month or two to fabricate the buildings. Well, what's, what's gonna happen to the price of everything in that three to four months or six months it, it, that's what's really driving us crazy. And it's hard to go back to your clients, your, your cl the clients that, um, that we work closely with. I've been working with them since 2008 when I started the company and we've never had to go back and increase prices, but they, they, they kind of understand that we have to do that now out of necessity. Um, so every little bit counts. Absolutely. Due to recent geopolitical developments in Europe, the provision of energy has become a priority for the country's economy and well-being. What would you say are the most pressing needs as far as infrastructure to guarantee the provision of energy moving forward? So it, with, it, without trying to get too political, because I, I, you know, we can turn on our nightly uh, TV and, and see the left yelling at the right and the right yelling at the left, and we really get nowhere, right? But what we're seeing um, from a global view, two things, uh, the, the, new, the Green New Deal and the hatred of fossil fuels. Um, you know, we install solar panels. We've been involved with foundations for uh, windmills and things like that. We're, we're all about alternative energy and green energy. Um, that we, we move natural gas. 90% of the work we do is, is moving fossil fuels. But to compare fossil fuels, natural gas, to fossil fuels, heavy coal is not the same. Um, no. I grew up in Pittsburgh uh, with the steel. I come from a family of steel workers. Uh, you know, sometimes you, you get up before going to your going to high school and you could smell that sulfur in the air. You know, we haven't seen that in Pittsburgh uh, since the early eighties when all, when all the steel mills shut down. Um, I come from a coal background where we designed very similar buildings. This building that, that you see at the top here, um, about six, seven years ago was the biggest coal prep plant in North America. Uh, it still is the biggest coal prep plant in, in North America, it's in Montana. Uh, but we, we've we seen what coal, what happened to coal. And, um, you know, coal is a very dirty fossil fuel, uh, but, it, but it built Pittsburgh, it built many of the industrial areas, it built America, it really did. Um, so natural gas, so, so internationally, we get lumped in uh, as, a, as a terrible fossil fuel, and it's just not the case. Fossil, fossil fuels, yeah, the problem is with methane, but overall, it's, it's one of the cleanest burning fuels in, in the world. Um, if you add nuclear to that, nuclear is very clean. But what we've seen with, with different nuclear problems uh, since Chernobyl uh, in the 1980s in Russia, uh, there's, there really is, you're not going to see, you'll never see another nuclear plant in America. There's some being built in India, uh, Russia, um, in, in China right now, you know, some of the big uh, world powers, but we're not gonna see that in America. So are we gonna immediately turn a button on and say, we're gonna be all solar all the time. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna do 30 million Teslas. We don't have enough energy to do that right now. And, you know, it's a complicated issue. Um, with the problem we're seeing right now in the, uh, in the Marcellus Shale, all through Appalachia, Ohio, West Virginia, Pennsylvania, Maine, Maine three states, is the Federal uh, Energy Regulation Commission is not approving pipelines. And that's, a, it, if you think about how close Northeast Pennsylvania is to Boston, New England, there hasn't mm -hmm. been a pipeline built there since the 1960s because of political pushback. That's really hurting us. Uh, we see Russian ships uh, every every winter bringing in natural gas from Russia. And now look, look at who our enemy is. The, the, the war in Ukraine is all over natural, re all about natural resources. Um, we have a big client, I don't want to name them right now, that is, has changed all of their um, push right now is uh, liquid natural gas and liquid propanes. 
uh, being shipped from the Marcellus Shale here in Appalachia, shipped down to Texas, to Mont Bellevue, and all of that is being shipped to Europe right now. Um, you know, again, we could talk the, the world politics of energy. Um, again, love the alternative fuels and what the future brings. We're just not there yet. And we're probably decades away. This season, we're looking at creativity. So to round out our discussion today, what role does creativity play in remaining competitive in today's landscape? That's a, that's a great question. Um, you know, be, being an old uh, steel guy, and when I say old, I truly mean it. <laughs> an old steel guy, a Pittsburgh guy, um, a coal guy, and now a natural gas guy. Um, I've, I've seen the demise of, of steel. I've seen the demise of coal. And I often tell people I'm on, I'm on my third strike as the, the war on fossil fuels uh, continues. Um, there's ways to clean up natural gas and we work with our clients. We, we have to be creative in showing our clients that we can capture some of that methane. Methane is, is, is the big omen uh, in natural gas and there's ways to do that. And, and we have been doing that with our clients uh, where some of our competitors really don't wanna jump into that realm. Um, like I said earlier, we're, we're installing solar panels at oil and gas sites. So you have, co you know, you have a drill site, 100 yards away, you have a compression site, um, a little bit closer, maybe a transmission station, bringing huge amounts of natural gas to, to send all over America. And then we have, um, we have 10, 10 to 20 acres over on this side, and it's facing where the sun faces. So we're talking to our clients and we have been installing solar panels on some of these uh, compressor sites, which is, which is a great way um, to, to move forward and getting away from fossil fuels. So. That, that's a little bit creative, but uh, it'll continue, no doubt. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much again, Mark. You're welcome. Thank, thanks for having me, Abby. Have a great day. That was Mark Plasky, the founder and CEO of Steel Nation. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel to hear more CEOs and thought leaders share their opinions and advice on today's business climate. Until next time, I'm Abby Malone, and this has been Invest Insights. Thank you for tuning in.